welcome to my studio here in Akakeek, Maryland. I am eager to show you two techniques that I've developed uh, in the past few years. And these techniques are an offshoot of my continuing obsession with the boat form. I think the boat form is so pretty, graceful. I love it. And these came about as I was experimenting with wheel thrown bowls and how to make them into lovely long ovals. And I found these two techniques to be something that I enjoyed using over and over again because it provides such an opportunity for variation and experimentation. And you see I've got a, a series of bowls here. Some of them I trimmed a foot uh, on the bottom on the wheel and some of them I didn't. I just carved the bottom to follow the interior curve and if the walls were thick enough then I carved in this circular linear pattern that'll look nice after I've cut into and reassembled the, the bowl. The first uh, form that I've developed, and this one is the one with the foot on the bottom. And what I'm going to do first is, is just squeeze it in equally. Now I want to get rid of these sides because I'm going to reapply them. So I have quickly made these just little slices of curved uh, paper here. Newspaper actually works better than brown paper, I found. This one seems to fit the best. I just want the ends to reach the, the ends of my, my squished in bowl and give me a little template here so I can draw a line with the pin tool. And the, the goal here is to make sure that both pieces that I'm going to be cutting off are the same on either side. That's why I'm using this as a guide. And then to, to double check, I'm just going to measure how deep that slice is. And it's a little less than an inch and a half. So I'll take this over here, a little less than an inch and a half, and make a little mark. And then take my template and fit it in and just draw a little line and it didn't fit perfectly so I'm just going to finish my line inside by eyeballing it. When I go ahead and cut on that line with my X-Acto knife, if it looks a little wobbly I'll just make it straight. this out a little more. Sometimes I don't have to do this, sometimes I do. Let me score this cut edge because we're going to be sticking the pieces back on again. And this is where you might run into problems with the pieces cracking or not adhering well, so I really rough up the edges and then clean it up after they're applied. Okay, now I'm going to use my special slip, which is of course the, the clay body itself, but I've added insulation fibers, the cellulose that you uh, can buy in the hardware store, you get a huge amount, and um, I use it to make paper clay also. It's got little tiny fibers which help the two pieces mate together and not pull apart. Be sure you've got enough of this and then we'll wipe it off afterwards. Okay, bend this, curve it around in half like so and just take it and where my bend is, I put that right on the point of the bowl and then squish down the cut edges. Yeah. And then 
and miraculously they always meet in the middle here. Of course, it makes sense that they would, but it's always a nice surprise. Okay, then it's just a matter of cleaning this up. I was making one of these a day or so ago and this seam just, it was just so frail and it wasn't working and I was tired of fussing with it and I, I thought, well, maybe I can just cover it up with a coil to add strength and it might be a nice design feature. I like this form. It's a clover leaf and it just uh, was drilling with different size drill bits, uh, three, three holes that are all close together. Uh, you'll see when I bring my extruded piece over how nicely it sits on the rim. All right, here's my extruder and you can see this cloth on the end so I don't poke my eye out when I come over. Okay, it should be fairly soft clay. There's the nice coil. I like to um, put the coil on with a minimum of fussing and let it kind of naturally drape itself. And you see I've got a little curled end there, so that might be nice like that. Right now I'm just kind of playing with it. And then I'll score and slip. Got. This is where um, you improvise and let things just happen naturally. Okay, and I have enough here. I can probably do a nice little curled up knot. Here's one where I just put the coil on half of the, the rim and you can see how the pieces, when I added the, the, the um, crescent shapes, I went, I shifted it a bit, so it's not like divided in half. It's not bilaterally symmetrical. The, the little valley is offset. And actually, I, I'm finding I like that better. You can probably see what I did here. I used the uh, three-part coil all around the rim, and then I had a little, this little tool with a nice rounded end, and I just pushed in to make these nice indentations, which will be nice when I glaze the piece. Now I'm gonna show you uh, how to make this form, which I'm gonna call an origami bowl because it does involve some pretty nifty folding. And this one starts with a bowl that, that has been trimmed so there's no foot. And uh, I'm gonna show you one that's got the, the carving around the the sides of the, the wall of the bowl. I use a slab mat here, and you can see I've, I've got concentric circles and then parallel lines. And I just put this, center it on one of the, whatever circle it seems to fit on best. And then I pick two of my parallel lines, and I'm gonna cut out the middle section. So I'm just gonna lay a, tape measure down, following the lines, and I'll use my pin tool. Okay, so then this put aside and I'll use that somehow to, to make the, a pedestal. Now I've got these two curved pieces, shallow, they're not, uh, they're less than half a bowl, and they're scored and slipped, and then I'm going to press them together, and actually it works better if I'm seated, but I get something like this, and then I'll score here and score here. And then this corner will bend over and become part of the rim there. And the same for the other side. This one's gonna have a 
very small opening, which is kind of interesting. There's a small opening, so this probably would be suitable for a little vase. And actually, I have one finished here. And you can see how I use the middle section to make a little stand for it. Here's a little larger one, and I just did a very delicate little dot pattern with my sewing tracing wheel around the rim and I added the two spheres for little accent points and also to strengthen these, the, these uh, corners, which is a weak area, and that's where the pot will tend to pull apart. Um, here's one that's a little fancier. This one, I've got the coil on the edge. You can see that. And I just draped it loosely at the corners and then used a stamp to give it the feeling of maybe fabric, uh, a draped pot. Here's one that's a small one that's finished, and you and I you can see how I I use the carvings on the pedestal too to echo the the carvings that wrap around the the little pot. I hope you have fun with these techniques, and thanks so much for watching.